Warning. The following video features stunts performed either like by jackass? professionals or under the supervision of professionals. I remember I literally took a girl on a date to see one of the jackass movies and she was like, what are we doing here? I'm like, we're watching jackass. And she was like trying to kiss and show. I'm like, no, I'm here for Johnny Knoxville and Steve-O, okay? Get it through your fucking skull, all right? Patrick CC and the YouTube community guidelines must insist that no one attempt to recreate or reenact any awful, stunt yeah. or activity performed in this video. This is Life isn't show. just about having a lot of fun. And being really, really, Steve really, really, really cool. Life is about making people happy. Hi, my name is Steve-O, and I make people happy for a living. Steve-O will go down in history as one of the greatest stuntmen to ever live. The 48-year-old is still doing rad Priorities. stunts even in his older age. He has dedicated his entire life to making other people happy. He is a role model and a glimmer of hope for all people, people around the world through. who are struggling. But at one point, his life spiraled out of control. Steve had some really dark years. He was destroying himself, and everyone sat back and watched. Was he doing whippets? I was watching people walk around my apartment. People were never there. Oh my god, that was real. <laughs> he has broken every bone in his body. He has done a- DUDE! Emily literally just cashed at me a hundred fucking dollars. What the fuck? Emily! Dude, what the actual fuck? Bro, I'm actually... Girl, you for real? What the fuck? Yeah, no fucking way! Holy fucking shit! Chat, you guys are so fucking generous. Like, Emily, oh my god, girl. I fucking appreciate you so fucking much. Holy shit. Almost every substance Holy known to man. Holy fucking shit. Deal with it. I'm in the zone. I hate no, I, I fucking love you, bro. Thank you. Block it. That's what that gangsters do. Subs. His detrimental lifestyle Jesus almost reached the point of no Christ, return. Bro. It is a miracle that he is still alive. Bro, that's my biggest fear is losing a tooth. Jesus Christ. $100. I need a Max Ween. Bro, Emily's the Max Ween. Richard Ted Glover Jesus and wife Christ. Donna Glover gave birth to their new baby boy, Stephen. By the time Stephen was 13 years old, he had moved in this Bro, order give from Emily England to Brazil, where he spoke his first words in Portuguese, to Wait, Venezuela, damn. to Connecticut, to Miami, to England, to Canada, and back to England at age 13, Imagine where he would finish high school. Much. He moved so much because his father was the president of Pepsi Cola in the South American Holy division, shit. in charge of all operations in Brazil. With such a high position at a global uh, brand like uh, Pepsi, Ted was needed all over the world. Surely, the Glover family was amassing a pretty good fortune. Stop, the trade-off for those millions of dollars was spending quality time with the family. On top of Steve-O's father never being around, his mother Damn. struggled with alcoholism. One of the most vicious and underestimated illnesses affecting millions of people globally. Holy shit, when I was a like, baby, mom was like, uh, like still shook. not comfortable with me crying on an airplane. She didn't want to be like that with the loud baby on the airplane. Steve-O's veneers and, are, uh, are So insane. she would give me booze. <laughs> so the family dynamic was basically a mother willing to do anything to make solo parenting Damn. easier. Such as giving a toddler. Bro, I've heard about, about parents giving their babies a little bit of whiskey to put them to sleep or something. Alcohol to calm him down. And a father who was overly authoritarian trying to make up for the times where he was at work and couldn't properly guide his son. It's safe to assume that despite all the wealth being amassed, Steve-O was not living a stereotypical privileged kid life. Every time their family moved, Steve okay, was excited. Take, he saw it yeah, as a new really opportunity to be cool, much. to be Sometimes rad, I do. to make friends, I get but it didn't always turned, work. But... It was the sixth grade report card and my homeroom teacher wrote, <clears throat> Steve like desperately craves I if it's the, painful uh, for Steve you know, the talk. attention and approval you know, of his peers, but everything he does, you know, in seeking that brings about the opposite result. A lot of young men desperately Damn. want the approval from their fathers. Since that Damn. wasn't happening, he turned to his peers. Father, he wasn't getting their approval, approval either, so he went to extreme any, measures. Any On October 25th, 1987, Steve figured out he could do anything he wanted, as long as he wanted it badly enough. His favorite band, Motley Crue, was performing in Toronto Motley on their Crue Girls, Girls, so Girls Tour. Steve figured out the name of their manager, Doc McGee, and scoured through the yellow pages calling every single hotel asking for their room. 13-year-old Steve-O snuck out of the house to go and meet his hero, Tommy Lee. Steve loved Tommy Lee. Lifestyle. Fuck so he yeah. started acting out more, getting in trouble, 
and being rebellious. That's when he discovered his love for skateboarding. Yes. Steve's father won a video camera in a corporate golf tournament, but left it in his closet collecting dust. When Steve got into skateboarding on the streets of London, he now had a tool to document his newfound love. Skateboarding calmed Steve down a little bit. His father thought this passion That's would keep insane. him out of trouble. And it did, temporarily. Skateboarding is so Immersed cool. In the I always wanted to be good at skateboarding, 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 but I could never get good at further. it. He approached the stoners from his school looking to get his first high. He wasn't peer pressured, he wasn't tricked, he went looking for it. Almost immediately he was hooked, which quickly progressed into a love for alcohol consumption. Hot Before graduating shit. high school, he was already suffering from addiction. I'm like, no, I know what yellow pages are. I know a lot of you watching are aspiring artists who need quality instrumentals. Allow me to introduce fuck you. you fuck you. Fuck you. Uh, in, in One party school. No free brand deals. Steve's eyes were set back in America at the University of Miami. One Hell of the yeah. biggest party schools. You went to in college? Nation. In order to be accepted to the university, he had to write an essay. He wrote a one page redemption story that went something like this. The moral of the story uh, in, in this essay that I wrote was that you know, my mom's like an alcoholic, and I, I want to come to the University of Miami to really make something of myself. He got Accepted. <laughs> Little did they know, college was not going to be his redemption. Damn. He was getting kicked out of dorms, partying, destroying property. So After one year bug. with an impressive .79 GPA, Steve dropped out. Point seventy nine. Waste a bunch of money on tuition. Homeless, couch surfing, skateboarding, jumping off. Steve O did anything for a little bit of attention. Then he would drink through the night to hide his demons. Jeez. But in 1993, he decided to get serious with his stunts and maybe try to pursue a real career as a stuntman. He moved to Albuquerque with his sister Cindy we and decided to, to apply stunts, to the Ring Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Clown College, which is actually free Clown to attend college? if you manage to be one of the 50 students they accept per year. As goofy Points as it sounds, board. this was probably the most valuable learning experience of his life. He learned how to perform professionally. How to do stunts and make people laugh. That's Clown actually college sick. had no grades. You passed if you made people laugh and entertain them. Those were basically two of Steve's strongest qualities. The graduating class of 1997 was the last group of clowns to ever graduate from the Ringling Brothers College. His father did not attend Damn. his graduation because he didn't want his son to be a clown. However, his mother went and was very proud of him. Steve would not That's go on to pursue funny. a career with the Ringling Brothers. He did leave college with the most vital and career-defining transformation, his new name. Steve-O. We know that Steve's longtime passion was skateboarding, so Steve-O did everything cool he kid. could to make his mark on skate history. No, he didn't hit the parks every day. He did the most outrageous stunts that could be included in videos and magazines. Big Brother Magazine, a publication Damn. for the misfits of the skateboarding world. Nothing was off -line. YouTube is Consistently so crazy. Consistently pushing the boundaries of the First Amendment and cosplaying as an action sports magazine, they had a team of writers in charge of traveling the USA, finding rad stories, and documenting them. Steve-O was desperate to get an article about him, so he set himself and burned half of his face off. By the way, guys, I'm Damn. sorry for constantly censoring myself, but YouTube is literally age-restricting and limiting my ads on these videos for, like, the smallest things, so I apologize. So, no that's why, like, here's the thing about my YouTube videos. I use copyrighted music, and I say a hell fuck ton of cuss words and just do whatever. And I think I'll always do them my, my videos, even though they'll make way less money, because, like, I think that it makes the video better. Like, and that's what I'm worried about. Like, he, this guy's so worried about the ads and how much money he's gonna make off the fucking video. We don't get to see the goddamn stunts. Like, I get you gotta make you gotta make a living. And it's like, just making videos is all you got. Like, fuck it. Like, my videos I have now, I, I've posted, are all copywritten because I use copywritten music in them. But that, all that means is I can't make any money off of them. But I think it makes the video way better. So it's like, who gives a fuck? Surprise, this worked. He networked with the Big Brother crew, which included Jeff Tremaine, Love Jelani. Jones, and of course, Johnny Knoxville. They couldn't stand Steve-O, constantly wanting attention. His chaotic Damn. energy, raspy voice, and drunken sloppiness was a combination sober people could only handle for about 20 minutes before they needed a break. But they all warmed up to him because That's he was sweet deep down, Kata. didn't mean any harm, and was literally willing to do anything. Unfortunately, in 1998, Donna Glover suffered a bad aneurysm, leaving her considerably disabled both physically and mentally. She Damn. lived until 2003, but was compromised to the point that she never That's truly sad. got to see her son's success. It was at this moment Ted sat down with his son and told him that he had done him a disservice as a father. He didn't want his son to go Damn. down the path of being a stuntman, but he admired Steve's dedication and persistence, and pledged to support his career from this day forward. Despite his father's newfound support, the damage was already done. Steve's father had spent multiple weeks weeks, even months away from Steve while he was growing up. He would travel all over the world doing good, and be Jelani. missing from Steve's life. They never had a real relationship. Now that his mother was permanently hospitalized, Steve was alone, surrounded by a bunch of people who were going nowhere and encouraged him to be as wild as possible. His drinking habit got worse, and hard drugs became a bigger part of his everyday routine. Drugs! Oh my god! 
His teeth were insane. In the mid-90s, Tremaine in Knoxville thought, how about we film some more of these ridiculous stunts we've been writing about and remove all the skateboarding? Double down on the chaos that was so wildly beloved by the skate community, which would become Jackass. After Dude, some I heavy convincing Jackass. on October 1st, 2000, MTV took a leap of faith and aired the first episode. It was a success. Hospitalizations of teenagers hit an all-time high. Just yeah, kidding, dude. But I wouldn't be surprised if that was true. I was now, trying Skibo to do and jackass, jackass stunts. Guys were getting rewarded for this Not behavior, like the crazy ones, money and fame, fussy, mostly fame. I would do it's been like other ones. Steve was making around two hundred dollars to five hundred dollars per stunt, which was basically just enough money for him to get his next fix. But he wasn't satisfied with chump change. Steve was on a mission, and he That's started crazy. grinding. He that released smile. the "Don't Try This at Home" video slash DVD shortly after Jackass aired. This was a compilation of all his crazy stunts from the late '90s that didn't get picked up for the show. One hundred forty thousand copies. Sold. If he sold the Damn. video for seven dollars or more, which is likely, he would have grossed over one million dollars. The problem is, Steve probably saw none of that money, which I'll get to in a minute. So welcome to our tour video. It's like, we didn't even want to have a tour. We didn't know. Did you really? You know? Yeah, dude. We got this crazy guy, Nick Dunlap, out of Cleveland, Ohio. He's like, I want to pay you a bunch of money to show up at spring break in Panama City, you know? Like, it's like, all right, dude, you know, what do you want me to do? I want you to show up and get f***ing wasted. You know, it's like, yeah, I can do that, you know? Literally getting paid to get wasted. What could possibly go Real. wrong? He decided to turn this into a business venture. The Don't Try This At Home Tour with Wee Man, Preston Lacey, and some other jackasses. This was a multi-city tour where they traveled around North America to perform live stunts. That's crazy. What the fuck? After selling probably $1 million in videos and doing shows in front of thousands of people, on top of selling merch, so surely they were making Yeah, I heard he's in recovery well, right they were, now. but Steve was seeing none of it. The manager-producer of the tour, that was Nick a while Dunlap, back. told Steve that they sold the tour for $10,000. That was what Steve would split with Preston and Wee Man, making his take home about $3,000 for the entire thing. On top what of that, the they were fuck? selling tons of merch every night, of which they received none of the money. It's very possible this tour was generating anywhere from $20,000 to $100,000 per night, and Steve left with $3,000 over the whole tour because he wanted to get f***ed up and be the man. So That's insane. So we went to Mexico in the summer and sold out the largest nightclub in Mexico three weeks in a row. And I thought, man, that was cool. But I was bummed out because I couldn't walk for days after that TV on. And Nick was thinking, how the hell am I going to make this show happen night after night? But it had to happen, man. How did Damn. he make the show happen night after night? Pure determination to be the coolest the and PD dangerous guy in the room. Insane, and drugs. I just don't think a sober person could handle that much damage to their body night Took after all night. The money Steve for compiled real. the behind the scenes tour footage into a video. Don't try this at home tour video. Displays exactly how crazy their lifestyle is. On stage and off. The stunts Dude, never what a, end. Imagine, never. imagine having these memories just going on tour, doing crazy, like getting drunk, like... What a life. Friends, 24 7, Steve O is living the life of a reckless stuntman. Now that I'm all famous and everyone thinks I'm cool, I'm gonna f hurt myself. Jeff Tremaine and the Jackass franchise Jeez. is known for being very strict with pay. Nobody got to negotiate contracts, nobody got royalties besides Knoxville. It was a get what you get and don't complain Damn. situation. The TV show only lasted three seasons and got Steve O pretty famous, but Jackass the movie changed everything. Dude, the movie well, was so out that good. I was gonna be presenting tonight. Rip Brian Dunn for real. Good for him. I have it, liquor. What's up, though? I came up with the There's most video amazing of stunt ever. And I'm ready to do it. I told him. But they told me I'm not allowed to pull my wiener out. Don't worry. Did you learn that? Oh. Forget the money. Steve-O was officially cool. He was what the coolest the guy ever, which was his lifelong dream. Yeah, what's up? Hey, this is Steve-O. I'm really cool. Nah, I'm just kidding. No way. Hey, see you in the microphone. Yeah, do you think I'm cool? Yeah. Despite all the drugs the Steve was doing, art. the biggest drug to him Real. was approval, was attention. Damn. Even if it was over the phone with a stranger or for a hotel staff. He That's drastically crazy. lacked attention from his parents and tried to get it from anyone he could when he walked in a room. Hey, on the miracle video, pay close attention to this with a f I, made, I made it for my mom, okay? And that's why I've been out of f control, dude. 
Damn. Steve-O was broken. His mother was now living her final days. Damn. He achieved exactly what he told her he would achieve, but she couldn't witness it. On November 7th, 2003, Donna Glover peacefully passed away. She would have That's been so extremely sad. proud of her son. No, for real. So Luckily, sad. Steve-O had some sort of stability in his life. He landed his own MTV show along Chris Pontius called Wild Boys. These two traveled all over the world, would learn about local cultures and traditions, eat local foods, and interact with the local wildlife. By my description, it sounds like just another basic wildlife show. As we know, it was anything but that. It was like real-life Beavis and Butthead traveled the globe in G-strings. At about 1500 bucks a pop, the cockatoo is the biggest ripoff from the pet store. Not only do they bite, they have the most annoying voices in all of the world. Oh my god. <laughs> There's so many shows in the movie Jack has spin off. The stunts were not as over the top, but equally as dangerous. This show was a great way for the mainstream audience to get to know and love Steve-O, because where they lacked in over-the-top grandiose stunts, they made up for with humor and personality. Wild Boys filmed its last season in 2005, and without consistent work, Steve-O was about to enter his darkest years. Oh shit. It gets worse? Damn. 2005 to 2007 would be Steve-O's darkest times. Jesus Christ. His drug use reached an all-time high, and it's truly a miracle he made it out alive. His Who's drugs possessed? of choice were ketamine, cocaine, nitrous oxide, Xanax, but he would do anything he could get his hands on, including, but not limited to, meth, video head cleaner, aluminum Jesus cleaner. Jesus Christ. He recorded everything during this time. He had a massive email list that he compiled over the years with his website. Steve would send the videos of him on drugs, straight up vlogging his downward spiral to everyone he knew. At some what point, he realized Nick Dunlap was taking advantage of him, Bro. but he released three major projects and did two world tours before he realized Nick was getting filthy rich off of him. After traveling the world with his best friend and releasing two other videos, Steve was finally making money. Unfortunately, this wasn't a good thing because nothing good comes from an addict with tons of money and nothing but free time. This is the life I chose. This is insane. Am I? Where is it? Make any folks? I have to write an email tonight. To Fifty Cent. What the fuck? But it didn't just happen in the comfort of his own hotels and apartments. He was My very God. obviously not doing okay in his public appearances. He was a guest on a Comedy Central show where he got absolutely wasted beyond belief. But they kind of set him up because they said, We we thought it'd be fun if you had a few drinks and then came out here and did a stunt. But you I would love that. All right. Steve-O had been getting paid to act out of control. Getting paid to be a jackass. People didn't care about his well-being. Nobody cared to ask how he was or maybe that he should Poor slow down. Steve -O. His brand, his job, was literally to be a reckless and chaotic individual. Yeah, just to get fucked up, hurt, failure. drunk as fuck. Kind of, kind of. It's quite dangerous what you're encouraging kids to do, the jackass stunts. There's more to me than people really know, you know. I'm get just out of give this guy get out of here. Dude, I look fing great right now. Making my dad proud is definitely yeah. the the ultimate high that I chase. I'm just tight with my family, and I I can't I can't help but to disappoint them a lot of the time. But what the making fuck? Making proud is the happiest that I can be. Although he was out of control, a danger to himself and everyone around him, and seemingly absent-minded, he was very self-aware. He knew exactly why he was so messed up. He knew how badly he just wanted attention. He knew he just wanted his dad to be proud of him. He had too much pride to ask for help, even though he knew he needed it. His dad Not didn't him wrong him. for being so absent in his life, but Steve-O never actually asked him for anything. Steve-O knew his fate was coming. He even tells a story of hallucinating his own intervention. He knew it was time to get sober, but it still took a little bit of force from his friends. Oh my god, Chad. After months of pre-planning, one day Johnny Knoxville and some of the Jackass crew showed up to Steve-O's house and forcibly brought him to a rehabilitation. W. Johnny Knoxville. He had no choice. Knoxville came over to my apartment with the director of Jackass, the director of photography, the executive producer, the sound guy. It was like the whole crew of Jackass came over to stop me from hurting myself after helping me hurt myself for 10 years. <laughs> That's <laughs> I crazy. I was defiant. I didn't want really any part of it. And then it became clear that this was not a yes or no question. This was a you're going to come willingly or we're going to physically beat you up and take you against your will. Knoxville asked Steve-O's father to be there when they picked him up. Damn. He said no. I said no. I'm going to come out, but I'm not going to come for the intervention because his jackass friends will do a much better job without me 
right. than they could possibly do with me. March Someone 10, cares about him. Was his first day. Better late than so never. After a week sitting Always in reach out to your like friends solitary and family confinement, child. Steve-O started reading a book on alcoholism, thinking about his life. He was defeated. He thought he was a lost cause. He thought nothing worse could happen, meaning the only way he could go was up. He was the perfect candidate for sobriety. He could only improve from here, and that's exactly what he did. Since that day, Steve-O yeah. has not consumed any drugs or alcohol. Damn. From the day I'm scripting this video, 5,248 days Damn. sober, 14 years, 4 months, and 13 days, 172 months, an amazing accomplishment. But after a few months of getting sober, the fog starts to clear. Steve realizes how much of a burden he was, how embarrassed he was, how yeah. much harm he caused to his friends and family, all the bridges he burned, all the terrible public appearances. He felt shame. He felt like he worked so hard to get sober, only to feel worse. Very few people stay sober for yes. long term. Um, it's actually uh, like 5% of alcoholics. And the other 95%, they say die drunk, of causes related directly to alcoholism or respectively. Damn. Drinkers. The mission of staying sober is a lifelong battle. The toughness of that is grossly underestimated by it people. It really is, Luckily, bro. Luckily, Steve-O has a massive audience of people that still love him. Plus, he didn't just get totally lame afterwards. In fact, some people argued that sober Steve-O was funnier because he was more relatable. He showed his fear on camera in Jackass 3D, which was hilarious. Throughout the past decade, he's still trying to outdo his old stunts and prove to himself that he can be just as rad while being sober. He rescued a street dog in Peru, Wendy, who became his life partner. He became a big Aww. animal rights activist. He now owns a small farm that he and his fiance take care of. He went vegan for many years. He even went celibate for over a year to test his strength. He got arrested, sure, but that's because he was protesting SeaWorld. He started pursuing Damn. a stand-up comedy career, even releasing a special in 2020, and promoted it by duct-taping himself to a billboard. He has an active YouTube channel and podcast that he uses to rehash all his crazy stories and experiences. He connects with people who are in recovery, and does his best to extend his help to other friends and celebrities suffering from addiction. He continues to push a positive message and be a role model for all people, let alone people w struggling Steve with addiction. It's a miracle that Steve-O is alive. The bravest, hardest, and most badass stunt he ever did was get sober and stay sober. Hell yeah! Fuck yeah!